Hey everybody, producer Dave here. Just want to let you guys know we had a little bit of an audio sync issue. I did my best to clean it up. It gets better as the video goes, so just stick with it. We have an awesome mock draft here, so stick around. You guys are going to love it. Hello everybody. Hi there. Hey, my name's Chris. Thanks for coming to our video here. Uh, we're here with a f first of five weekly mock drafts that we're going to be posting on Thursdays leading up to the fantasy season for 2024. I am here with the great Jake Seeley from The Athletic. Hi, Jake. Hi, how's it going? And you know what I'm doing, right? You know, You're wearing you jeans, jeans, not in the course. ocean, but you are wearing <laughs> jeans. Uh, that's the huge update that we needed to get to. We're brought to you by AG1, by the way, great sponsor <laughs> of this entire series. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. I'll talk a little bit more about them as we get going. So, our uh, by the way, if you want to follow Jake on Twitter, please do at All In Kid. I'm at Harris Football. Uh, Jake works at the Athletic. He writes for my money the best waiver column there is in the fantasy business at the Athletic. I have a subscription at the Athletic because of Jake. Um, he also has the All In Fantasy podcast two times a week. Jake is a guest on my show, my podcast all the time. We love him. And uh, really appreciate him being here. So let's set this thing up for you. This is 12 teams. It's going to go pretty quickly because 10 of them are bots. They're going to pick right away. And then Jake is going to pick third, and I'm going to pick eighth. It's a half point per reception. And I think we said 14 rounds, but we're not going to pick kickers and defenses. Kickers are against Jake's religion. We don't, we don't, we don't do that. Yes. Oh, it's off screen. I have a t-shirt right over here on my stormtrooper that says by the band way, kicker, by the band way, kickers. That's a pretty good set you're on now. I'm happy to see you in your in your new environs you. there. And of course, I have the bookshelf for one more video after tomorrow. I'm back to Los Angeles. I, like I mean, you know, it's, I, always like the guitars. it's, it's I got a little something going on. Then I get back to LA and there's not much going on. All right. So uh, we're going <laughs> to, these picks are going to go quick for the bots. And then we're going to take our time and describe what we're doing. Dave Piper is producing and is great and uh, is going to help us through it all. You ready to go, Jake? All right. So uh, we'd love to know what you guys think of all our picks and whether you think we're crazy and what you would have done and stuff. Always down in the comments. And of course, subscribe. We would love that. Dave Piper, hit it. Okay, so we've seen the first two, two, first okay. two bots here. Christian McCaffrey goes one, C.D. Lamb goes two. What are you thinking? Yeah, pretty much the consensus, one, two. Uh, I am leaning wide receiver. I have done a draft actually for the athletic when I had the third pick. Went Jonathan Taylor, and just because he's my number two running back, uh, we can debate that if you want. But it comes down to I saw how my team played out. I didn't love it through four rounds, so I'm going the opposite direction. Now, this is why people mock draft. This is why for you sure. see how these things play out. I'm going to go wide receiver with I think there's a case for Justin Jefferson, but I'm taking Tyreek Hill for the fact that, I mean, why not do it again? Well, there's no reason not to see him do it again. All right. This year, I mean, opinion. I actually think probably, think probably – at two and three, I'm thinking running back, but I'm with you that mock drafts are the time to try things out because uh, it feels like to me there's three running backs kind of ahead of the ahead of the pack. Unfortunately, both of those running backs have gone before I'm picking eighth. We saw <laughs> uh, Brees Hall go four, Justin Jefferson go five, Amon Ra goes uh, six, and then I would have liked to have gotten Bijan at seven, and it didn't happen for me. Um, what do I want to do here? This is a half PPR. Oh, see, I think hmm. I'll get some running backs that I like later. For me, this is between Jamar Chase and Saquon Barkley. And I don't think Barkley will go this high, generally speaking. It's hard to say what the bots are going to do, obviously. Um, I think I'm going to maybe take the chance Barkley's there when we come back around. So I'm taking, taking Jamar Chase. I hear he's pretty good at football. Yeah, it's, it seems to be. Although I heard he dropped some passes in preseason. White stripes. Rookie, All right, so. we're going to see. Oh, Barkley gets oh, hipped <laughs> right before me. Team 10. Yeah, Team 10 was it. listening. Uh, and I was looking at it feeling really good about myself. When you see a quarterback go at whatever that is, pick 15 in a, in a non-super flex draft, what do you think? I think that's absurd. I, I understand it if we got to the late third uh, at that point, because if it's 310, 311, it's like, eh, I don't want to risk him going into the two or three picks right after me until the round four to be like, oh, I got him in round four. But late third round is the earliest I'm thinking about it for the big quarterbacks. Three, in my we're opinion, not, we're not, we're opinion. not, we're not doing this. Uh, these bots, of course, are not as versed in Jake and my draft strategy. So uh, I took Chase with, <laughs> with the, with, the with my first round pick. And I have to think about what to do with my next pick. 
Um, I mean, who who is available here? I'm emceeing at the same time. Did we have Puka go? He did. We had Amon Ra go. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. You're seeing what I know. I hate the eighth pick. The eighth I pick. Hate it's it. bad, huh? <laughs> um. I think I'm going to go Devonte Adams and go receiver receiver. Uh, this is not, I promise anybody out there, this is not zero RB. That's not in my, that, that's not how I uh, preach and faith. Uh, you know, I, there's enough running backs. I think I'm going to get them. I'm going to go Devonte Adams. We're going to see how that goes. I certainly, there are some running backs here that I could also grab in the second round, but we're going to start with Chase and Adams. I have a feeling, yep, there goes Kyron. All right. London and so I, we we we've got nine running backs off the board. I have taken none of those running backs. Mm-hmm. One quarterback off the board, and everybody else a wide receiver. So I assume at this point you're taking uh, Sam Laporta. Just kidding. Uh, well, oh, yeah. what's your what's 100%. your thought, thought process here? <laughs> am... Especially knowing that ten running backs are off the board. The team behind you has two picks, and they might be thinking running back with one of those two picks. Does that? I know the folks no. generally are thinking positional strategy. Does that even occur to you in the second round? Uh, it can a little bit if I'm going for a tie break situation. But what I'm looking at here is this pretty much played into my wheelhouse for how I would draft it. Like I, I like tiers. Uh, you know, I don't like I'm not beholden to them and wouldn't ever shift depending on how the draft is falling. But for this reason, I wanted a top nine wide receiver. If I was going to go wide receiver, wide receiver, which I wasn't expecting to make it all the way back around to me, it was the third pick. And I have one running back left in this tier for me. And it might be different than what I've at least I've seen out there. I don't understand it because Derrick Henry has a minimum of 10 touchdowns every single season. And that was in eight games when he had the 10. Every other season, it's 12 plus. You're telling me with the Ravens now and we just watched what Gus Edwards did and Derrick Henry still led the league in carries last year. I know he could break down at any given point, but the dude's a freaking nature. I'm not that worried about him breaking down. And on this offense, I actually think Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry is a little bit underrated so far this year. I think I, I have no problem with it. Um, I actually have other running backs ahead of him here, but um, I he's very close for me. Uh, and as it turned out, team five didn't even think about it. Let's take a, let's take a quick pause here though. Actually, Dave, if you want to pause it, uh, just cause we can acknowledge our sponsor, uh, AG one, uh, we are very indebted to AG one for, uh, allowing us to do these mock drafts for you. I drink AG one every single day in the morning on an empty stomach. It has replaced my multivitamin. It has everything I need nutrition wise. Uh, that I'm replacing from a multivitamin. It also comes with a prebiotic and a probiotic. And Dave Piper, celebrity producer, and I were discussing before we started recording exactly why we like. We're we're, we're going to be delicate about why we particularly like one aspect of AG1. But things are things move great. Things move fantastic mm-hmm. with AG1, <laughs> uh, and they've been a great partner of mine for going on four years now. Uh, if you're interested, if you go to drinkag1.com slash Harris, that will set you up with a free a year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your subscription. It's not a long-term commitment. You can try it, see if you dig it. It's less than a cup of coffee a day. Like, don't do Starbucks each day, and you'll wind up uh, covering your, your AG1. I'm a huge fan. I go to the gym a lot and I notice my energy is a lot better. So if you're looking for kind of a way to simplify your nutrition, looking for maybe a little help with the, with the moving, uh, we, I really recommend AG1. So does Dave. And we really thank them a lot. Drink AG1.com slash Harris. And now we will proceed. So you see Hertz go right before you. And uh, that team five yep. there did not wind up going running back. I, I guess what I'm the thing I know I get asked a lot is uh, at what point do you start feeling, OK, now I really need to make sure I do position X. I really need to make sure. But because you've gone wide receiver running back, you may not feel that pressure right now. Not yet. And I'm actually very conflicted across three positions because there's a running back I like here. There's a wide receiver I like here. And Travis Kelsey still on the board. I've been for years. Do not take Travis Kelsey in the first round. Uh, but early third, I okay. start considering it. I'm still probably going to wait because I think that group is so tight where it used to be. Travis Kelsey, two, three points per game better than the next closest person. If that was still a conversation. But when we're talking about multiple guys in that 11, 12, 13 point range, 
I'm still probably uh, Kelsey's not making it back to me, so I'm probably going to pass. My wide receiver would probably be Mike Evans. I'm a little hesitant. If I, I kind of feel like everything went right for Baker Mayfield in that passing game last year. Well, specifically for Mike Evans. So I'm going to go, which, again, I don't know if you're on the same page as me, but I think is a little undervalued. I watched the contract, and I watched the opportunity for years. Aaron Jones on fewer expected touches of what I think Jacobs is going to get. I, I think Jacobs is in store for a bounce back See, with the Packers, honestly. Breaking so my heart. Jacobs. I mean, that's who I would have taken if I hadn't have taken Devontae Adams. Uh, he was never probably going to get through to me. Oh, Kelsey really wasn't going to get back to you. Yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey Evans, Evans uh, right, <laughs> right after. So I was done a little bit of favor after Jacobs. Um, I'll say now here I am in the third round and I'll answer my own question, Jake, after having gone receiver receiver, it's not impossible. I mean, zero RB, right? If I really want to go zero RB, I can go third receiver. Jake, you know me pretty well from like nine years of friendship and being on podcasts together and stuff. Do you think I'm going to go zero RB? <laughs> no, that is not a chance. It's fair. I'm probably not going to go zero RB. So um, uh, I think Jacobs is 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 probably being underdrafted. Uh, we we should say. I mean, we're recording this, posting this like the first day in August. ADP is garbage. We don't really know yeah. anything yet about where people are definitely going. Uh, there's a lot of feeling like things are right. settled, and the fact is mostly sickos are doing drafts now and raised hands raised we're sickos but like 99 point whatever percent of leagues are not drafting the data is pretty bad if we're looking at jacobs's adp currently i probably like the value and i also like this running back who is currently batting a hamstring injury as we speak but i'm going to assume he's okay i will take joe mixon joe in round three what's your reaction to that pick Go Texans. Love it. <laughs> I, I, I love I think think he's I think he's again, you know, underrated in eyes. I won't even say drafts right now in ADP. I just think that uh, a lot of people just the sense from like watching and listening to like other podcasts and stuff like that. They're kind of treating him as, as he's like, a, eh, he's fine, but I think he's better than fine. I, I think he's going to get the same, if not possibly more volume. The touchdown upside should be there. The offense is going to be there. Like things would have to go hellishly wrong for the Texans offense for Mixon to not be an RB1. He's a top year. 10 guy for me, no matter your format, because you know he's also going to catch passes. And like, you know, the, if arguments ever get made against running backs, which is to say, oh, well, you know, Damian Pierce, somebody else is there. Cam, Cam Akers could turn into. Yeah, that's the NFL now. There's three guys that are going to get more than 80% of their backfield's touches, and they got drafted really early. Like, it's fine if Joe Mixon gets 75%. It's pretty much what he got la uh, more, more last year with the Bengals. But even if it's less with the Texans, I'm not worried about workload. He's not a top five talent among running backs, but he probably is a top 10 talent and go Texans, as you said. All right. Yeah. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. Now that I have, I have what I consider to be a low level RB1, um, even though many people down in the comments may not agree, uh, I will, uh, feel less pressure to go. I'm kind of looking at my own list here. What receivers are left? Hmm. Well, I'm not taking Malik neighbors. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe well, I just Daniel don't Jones? believe in rookie receivers <laughs> being taken. I mean, uh, we've already seen uh, Marvin Harrison's already been drafted. Um, I think I'm going to go. Ugh, I don't even think he's that good, but we are getting some points for PPR. So I'll take the shot with Rashad White. Well, Rashad White. There goes neighbors. Yeah. Good for whoever just did that. All right. So you you've started Tyreek Hill, Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I'll ask you the same question for the for, for the round four, five, six, something like that. We do start thinking positional here or no? Slightly, uh, mostly because I have two running backs on the roster. I am almost going to, I'm not going to completely shut down looking at running back at this point, but unless there's a great value in my opinion still on the board, uh, I'm not going to go for that third and lock up that flexed already mostly not just because I don't care about a running back being in the flex. It's just that early. If I saw a fourth yeah. great value and like now, now I'm just drafting right. you for my bench. So I am leading wide receiver. If uh, actually, if Lamar Jackson would have made it two picks earlier, I would have taken Lamar that I have him as my final, my big three. I don't even have Patrick Holmes as my big three. It's Allen hurts and Lamar for me. Uh, so I'm going to go back to wide receiver and I am scrolling down a few spots for this player I think people have forgotten how good T. Higgins is 
as the top two option with Chase and Joe Burrow. I think that T. Higgins is in play to return kind of that top 16, 18 wide receiver value and to get him late fourth, I think is Yeah, if a you nice think spot. about um the, the the second bananas last year that went in the second round, or maybe like early third, between Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, and uh T. Higgins. You know, Waddle paid off kinda, but I mean not really. I wouldn't take either any of them in the second round again, but like you don't have to anymore. Yeah. No, you don't. And actually, you're speaking of Jalen Waddles there, and I'm actually going to go for the number one on his team, which a vastly improved quarterback situation and the fact that it's no longer Kenny Pickett. So I think that George Pickens, with any quarterback that's not Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett is uh, in play for me. I actually think there's a conversation to say Amari Cooper, I continually think is under he and Tyra Lockett should go in the Hall of Fame of underrated wide receivers, at least in fantasy purposes. Uh, but I'm going to lean George Pickens just for slightly more upside, in my opinion. I think there's more risk than Cooper, but I, I think there's a Alvin higher Kamara just went. That was my pick. I, I think I think oh, I would have loved if he made it to you. That yeah, Kamara is is uh, another one. Like I think I think Jacobs, Mixon, Kamara. It's just it's very obvious to me that the market has just decided their situations are X and that they're right. Darn it! I know situations yeah. before the season starts, and then the season starts, and we're wrong about half the teams. We, we have a, we have a bit <laughs> on the podcast where cousin Josh, I say, okay, Josh, tell me teams that will be better than t- tell me teams that have no hope and teams that can't miss. He, he gives me three of each, and every year he misses more than half of them. And it's not because he's bad at it. It's because we as collective, the NFL reinvents itself, you know? So, like, if pe- people are going to yep, decide yep. the Saints offensive line is terrible and and Alvin Kamara fell off a cliff and that offense is just so bad and what do I want one, you know, 61-yard passes for? Cool. Cool. I would have taken Alvin Kamara. Jake, I didn't get him. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've been with me here, but I didn't, we didn't get him. Um, <laughs> no, Alvin no, Kamara. So, you know, you have you you have a thing for Amari Cooper. My eldest son, Keenan Allen, needs to join the team here. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'll take your <laughs> I'll take your uh, while we let the bots pick. Um, I noticed that Keenan Allen's picture is not of a Chicago Bear uniform. Um, <laughs> here's here's my thing about the Bears receivers. First of all, every rookie who gets drafted highly gets overdrafted. I don't want any part of Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, or Ruma Dunze at their prices, at what I assume their prices will be in mid-August. And, like, I'm not ranking DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Ruma Dunze as, like, a snapshot of what their production is going to be. I'm... Like, I freely admit, if I have Allen and DJ Moore both in the top 20 receivers, say, maybe it isn't hugely likely that they both finish there, but, like, week by week, they'll they'll ebb and flow, and they'll give me good production. And this is the question I wanted to ask you about Allen. Doesn't he have old man game, so shouldn't he age pretty well, and shouldn't his repertoire be perfect for a rookie quarterback? You would think uh, I'm actually with you on that. I, I love Keenan Allen in this scenario, and it goes to the point where I'm all, also to forget the rookie part of it. Like, just it, it's it. Yes, it's part of it, but why are people drafting a Dunze inside the top 35, top 40, or thinking of him as such for you know throw ADP out the window right now? But point being is like, did we learn nothing from JSN last year? Like, unless somebody gets hurt, why are you drafting the third wide receiver on a team? Which, as you mentioned, if I want somebody alongside DJ Moore, I want the veteran that they traded for. That is the guy who knows better than most in the NFL how to get into space and get open for, as you said, a rookie quarterback. I have a lot of Keenan Allen so far in early drafts because we are the nuttos that have already drafted at least we a are dozen the times. Um, all right, so I have I have two running backs and three receivers. As you said, that fills our running back slots and our wide receiver slots. And so I don't think I'm compelled to take a quarterback here. I'm not going to take a quarterback here. I'm going to be waiting probably many more rounds. We'll see if some of these bots wind up taking multiple quarterbacks, then I'll be mad. Any tight ends that I would want here? You know, no, no. Like I'm looking, Kyle Pitts is probably my highest rated dude. I already took Rashad White. Do I really need another bad football player on my team? Uh, So I'm just going to take my best available and my best available here. Somebody that I mentioned on the podcast on Thursday is just a player I love. I also think um, that, you know, while Jacksonville 
kind of uh, scuttles around to f- try to find outside receivers and gosh, who's the one to go down the field? It'll just be Christian Kirk in the middle of the field over and over and over again. I, I love that pick. I think Christian Kirk's a great value this year. Uh, yeah, like even if he just replicated right. last year right. in the sixth round, that's that's a good spot. So, and then, yeah, as you said, is so here we are one. at round six, and I, and this is the last probably round that I would ask you the same question that I've been asking you, which is to say, all right, you've got three receivers and two running backs. Uh, you know, you're you're you still have some starting spots available. Should a should a civilian a not you know you're a professional should a civilian doing a draft here in round six should that person feel pressure to go quarterback tight end to fill a starting spot? No. So actually, I, I thought this was interesting. Uh, Funston had us do mock drafts, and he I say plural because there was only six of us, and we each had two teams. One is we got to just draft how we wanted to, but then he assigned a role to everybody else. One oh. was zero RB, which yeah. I know you would love. One was proven quarterback. You can only take players with, you know, top five, top six quarterbacks, that type of stuff. My approach was balance, which meant I had to draft my entire starting lineup before I could touch my bench. (laughs) I hated it. (laughs) Hated it because, well, because you can't take value. Like right now, if Kyle Pitts would have made it, that was actually the name at tight end. That was my last name I would consider taking here. I think there's a drop off a little bit and maybe Evan Ingram uh, that comes back to the Christian Kirk situation and whether Brian Thomas steps up or Gabe Davis does anything of note on a consistent basis. Uh, But if you look at otherwise, you know, I mean, there's some good running back value here. There's just value here. And if I was forced right now, it'd be draft a quarterback. We have a giant here, like the next seven guys are all just the same guy for me or possibly reach on a tight end. So no, not yet. I, it's in the back of my mind that I don't want to ignore the position, especially if I get caught on the run because I am kind of close to the end. Um, but it's definitely, no, I am not going that way. I'm actually, you know what? I'm going back to running back. I don't think he's that great of a running back, but I'm basing it off the volume and I'll go for Zamir White. Like that team is going to run. Am I concerned that it's potentially going to be a passing situation and Zamir White's not going to do that much? Sure. But if I'm looking at split backfield, split backfield, split backfield, everybody on the board, uh, you know, I'll chase the volume. Rashad White, volume last year, I mean, did 3.6 yards per carry, which I know you hate that stat. I'm just saying <laughs> I my point up. being, I knew it I, as soon as I said, I knew. But my point being is like, you can be that bad running the ball, but when volume offsets it, we don't care. So I'm chasing volume here. This could be a bad pick, but I'm chasing the volume. Especially with DeAndre Swift there. I think I would have taken Swift, but. That's all right. There goes Joe Burrow. I actually probably should have taken Joe Burrow. I don't think I realized Joe Burrow was on the, I have Burrow higher than, than Richardson. And uh, I, I probably, it's a mock draft. That's why we do these. If when it counts, I'll take Burrow. When it counts, I'll take Burrow. Uh, all right. So you're really not feeling compelled by position now. You're just, no. you're, you're looking best available. Um, I'm going to go best back. Available. I'm just, yeah, and actually, in this point, I will kind of lean as the tie break back to position. Oh, I said I wasn't feeling it that too much, but but I mean, if I don't take Ingram here, I'll be looking at Ferguson, Goddard, Hurt Hawkinson, and hoping he comes back within four to five games instead of potentially half the season, a few potential breakouts. But I think there's definitively Evan Ingram is the best tight end on the board, and then there's a bunch of people that could be in the conversation. But I'll, I'll just – and I'm kind of curious how this works out. All right. I'm going to take Ingram we mock – Evan Ingram, the Rashad White of tight ends. <laughs> yeah, basically. And Amari Cooper, the wrong. Rashad White of wide receivers. Just players I'm like, oh, there. There should just be the all Rashad White team. <laughs> all right. So we saw Hollywood Brown. We saw Rishi Rice, back to back chief receivers. Uh, we got Dak Prescott. We got Kyler Murray. Um, do I feel pressure to go any? I have four receivers. Do I feel pressure to do anything here, particularly? Uh, I mean, I, there are guys that I like that have not been drafted yet. Um, I'm going to do. Uh, who was the number two running back in fantasy last year? Hmm. It, wasn't it sure White. wasn't. Number two running back. Num- Kyron, number two running well, back in fantasy last year. Was, was Moster. Moster. Yeah. Raheem Moster. So I don't, you know, I, I feel like this late, I can just see, maybe he'll, maybe he'll help Why me not? in the first half. Maybe the plan will be to kind of 
keep things the way they were last year for as long as they can until they can't justify it anymore, which probably that's coming, but I'll take the shot. Um, and let's see. I, I, I keep talking them up on the show. Um, I can't let them go by just in case. I really like Chase Brown's film. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take him before Zach Moss goes off the board, and that could wind up looking terrible. This is a very early mock draft, but Chase Brown fast. And I think I think pretty good. Limited film, but I definitely like him. We're in the eighth. Pretty good. Man, I like this is this is why you mock. Uh, I, I love the Chase Brown pick. I also hate what happened with all these picks. There's so many people in that range. Like Jordan Love, if he made it back to me, would have taken Calvin Ridley, Deontay Johnson. Uh, I actually didn't even see Mostert was still on the board. I actually probably would throw back Zemir White and just hope to get Mostert in the next round. I, like there's just this is what throw Evan Ingram <laughs> back if I could. This is why we mock. I mean, I would have. I, I guess I would have thrown what Kirk. Yeah, I like Christian Kirk, but I probably would have thrown Kirk back for Burrow. Now that I'm, you know, yeah, this is live. Get rag on us down in the comments. Just hit us up down in the comments. Tell us we're go- we're goofuses. Please do. Um, you're you're probably oh. not feeling like quarterback is mandatory here and that's the only position you haven't filled so are you still just kind of picking players yeah if jordan love made it back to me right i would have taken love uh now i'm just kind of uh, we're still in that tier there's only a few left in the tier for me but we're still there in the fact that i'm looking at there's two i'll just tell you i'm considering i'm considering nick chubb who i think that if he's even 100 percent, yeah 100 yeah, percent by october please and then the breakout in Jameson Williams, but at best case scenario, I think he's kind of a Torrey Smith, Deshaun Jackson later career where half the games are going to be good, half the games are going to be bad, and that's hoping he actually breaks out. So I'm going to I'm going to take Nick Chubb, even though I already have three running backs, and I don't think Jameson Williams versus some of the other wide receivers that are still there is that big of All a right. difference. There goes Brock Bowers, Jalen Warren, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, Trey Benson, and then I get both. Get both. All right, works for me. Oh, look at that. Two tight ends for Team Six. Congratulations, <laughs> buddy. After having Kelsey, too. That, I still genius. have no tight ends and no quarterbacks and probably could tell myself a story that um, that it's time to go Brock Purdy. And it's not like it's not like I feel compelled I like to. I'm not waiting for Brock Purdy. I'm just waiting for someone. You know what I mean? And then actually I Oh good grief. That was Two a mistake. Too. I, sh- I I I meant to take I meant to take this guy. He I have one spot higher, but I'm gonna take them both. I'm gonna take them both. I'm gonna give myself pro- obviously Justin not the Herbert. way I would really draft, but I wanted to make the point that I think Justin Herbert is oh, what's that? <laughs> this this mock is get, finish your thought. And then <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> well um yeah, I mean, what have I done here? If we were playing this out, I would be having to choose between Purdy and Herbert every week and want to kill myself. So uh, this is not what yeah. I would normally do. I didn't actually see Herbert there in real time. Um, I would take Herbert over Purdy by one spot, I think. Uh, I just want to say about Herbert, like he's clearly a dude I'm going to wind up with a lot because, again, everyone has decided, oh, it's Greg Roman. Oh, they're just never, ever, ever going to throw. And then I say, okay, yeah, but I think Lamar Jackson was MVP in a year where Greg Roman was his offensive coordinator. I don't feel like those guys are stupid. And there are 20 to 30 completions every week. I don't know who they go to necessarily, but Herbert's great. Herbert's, Herbert's a really good player. So I'm going to wind up with some Herbert. If I could throw Purdy back, I'd do it. Although Purdy's great. I, I just, I took two guys who were too close to each other and it's going to make my lineup decisions a problem. Yeah. And I was kind of hoping Purdy or even Herbert or even Jaden Daniels just because of the rushing upside. And I would take the gamble. I would actually go with another quarterback if I drafted Daniels. I would not make Daniels my second quarterback if I drafted Patrick Mahomes. That's what I'm laughing at here. I'm laughing at the wonderful bots <laughs> drafting Kyler Murray and Caleb Williams, drafting CJ Stroud and Tua, <laughs> drafting Mahomes and Daniels and screwing this up. So n- to answer your question, you kept asking me earlier. Now, because of how this draft is falling, like if this was a real draft with real people who do draft two quarterbacks, now yeah. I am feeling the pressure because I see two names left at quarterback and I'm like, I don't want to risk those both be going, being gone. And now I'm like, Will Levis, uh, Daniel yeah. Jones not being God awful terrible. So here I am going with and yeah, I am chasing the fact he only has 
three outdoor games this year, although I will probably need somebody. Again, I don't I don't ever plan for playoffs. You got to get there. However, when you see Chicago outdoors, San Francisco outdoors for this your golf. potential last two games of your season, it's a little yes, it's a little <laughs> scary, but I am taking golf right. here. You got you finally got your quarterback. All right. So we are now in the 11th round. We're doing 14 total. At this point, don't hold us to our ranks. We're sort of flying by the seat of our pants. We're going to go through these last four rounds pretty quick. So, Jake, you are you're, you can just yeah. kind of feel free. I, you know, I still haven't taken a tight end, so I'm, I think I have a tight end coming or two. But um, you can feel free to just kind of pick players that you like in late rounds so that people can remember, hey, Jake took him in that mock draft I watched. Yeah, Jake uh, was really, really, and still am, really mad that I got sniped on Khalil Shakir, ah. one pick in front of me. Uh, that was that's that, that's one of Curtis, my favorites. Curtis Samuel sitting right there. Um, so I'm going to go guy. with an... <laughs> uh, funny enough, you mentioned Herbert, and he said, we don't know. And no, we don't know. Um, but Joshua Good. Palmer... Why are yeah. we discount? Yeah, why are we discounting the fact that like why can't he be the one? I like Labat. I love actually Lad McConkey, but he's a rookie. Palmer's a veteran. Quentin Johnson can't hold on to the ball. Like, why can't yeah. it be Palmer? And I, for your point about that, I do have Herbert throwing the ball about 550 times. They're not going to only throw yeah. 450 it's with just Justin silly, Herbert. Right. Um, I'll take the tight end. I'll take the shot on Hawkinson. That's fine. I, I, yeah, I can I come like up with here. a solution. If you're telling me 11th round TJ Hawkinson, that's fine. So we're going to come back around. Dobbins is, yeah, that's a good pick there. I, Dobbins has got a chance to be a riser for sure. Um, yeah. I don't think I want to stash another injury guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, you, if you know who I'm thinking of. Uh, let's take. Um, this is great TV watching me sift through a list. This is this one or like sift. fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. At least you can't hear the dog snoring in the background. All right, so you know what one. I'm gonna do. It's a smiling goon. Taysom Hill for the weeks when TJ Hawkinson's not available. Oh my god, the smiling goon. Uh, my f my favorite thing from last year was it was earlier in the season. I think it was my second appearance, and you say we're just ranking Taysom Hill in the top ten. <laughs> we're just at tight end. We're just doing it. He finished tight end seven last year. He played he played about he he he, bl he blocked three times. He played about twenty five snaps at tight end. The only thing he's not is a tight end, <laughs> yeah, but he's eligible at tight end. So I love it. Chaos. So I am a sucker for this player. I'm going back at wide receiver, and I'm going back to Jahan okay. Dotson. I remember uh, last like, year you were all I, in. I, I think remember. Yeah, I do. But look at that depth chart. If he can't win as the number two, and Jaden Daniels can't make him at least a wide receiver four, and we're in round twelve now, and not 100%. round seven or eight like he was you last him. year, you're fine. Like yeah, uh, which makes it easy. So I'm going to come back and kind of get a little bit more balance. I have an injured running back with Nick Chubb potentially to start the season. So I'm going to grab a fifth running back and I am going to get one who I do think. And I'm not saying I know for sure. We know, you know, you know, we never say that on your show. I do think has the pass catching role for the Broncos. I'm going with Jaleel McLaughlin. I actually think he can bring more than just being an Antonio Gibson, but I think uh, round 13, it gives me some depth, especially half full point right. PPR leagues. Uh, I'd love another receiver. I've just kind of decided uh, this feels like a flyer on a receiver. And do I know who the highest remaining receiver is in my ranks off the top of my head? Not, not really seeing the full list of receivers here. Yes. Yes, I do. No, I do not. But I, I, someone else I mentioned <laughs> on the show, on the podcast on Thursday, somebody whose film I simply like, and so we'll take a shot that it's a functional pass offense. I like, I like Michael, Michael Wilson, Wilson a lot. I like him. I like the ball skills. I'm with you. And I, I lastly, always have. you know, okay, I'm doing Don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh wow, he yeah, was still Jonathan on the board. Brooks doesn't doesn't go till the end. I would. I would consider Jonathan Brooks in like round 10, honestly, if I wasn't even looking that range yeah. at that point. I mean, in the we're draft. having to do this quick, obviously. We we both had picks where we're like, whoa, that guy, oh, geez, I would have probably done something different. Like if I'm going to take Nick Chubb in round eight, I'd take Jonathan yeah. Brooks two rounds later. Maybe four like, rounds later. Not? Nick Chubb's awfully good. <laughs> All right. So I got sniped on my wide receiver by team nine. I was hoping Wicks would be there. I don't think we, I don't think the Packers Fair. know their pecking order. But I'll I'll take the stab on the cheaper cheaper one. Dobbs went too, right? 
Yeah, Dobbs went, whoa, Browns yeah. earlier. So, uh, you know what? If Kirk Cousins is going to do Kirk Cousins thing, that means more than Pitts and London are going to have value. It's not going to only be two people. So you tell me 14th round, a shot on Darnell Mooney to potentially win me a few weeks. I'll take that chance here. We made it all the way. JJ McCarthy, Mr. Irrelevant. That's a slap in the face. How dare they? Uh. That is just super (laughs) uncool. So uh, just taking a quick look back through your starters, your your reaction to having done uh, like, you know, people call them builds, you know, because I'm a cool fantasy guy. So I called it a build mm-hmm. like we just built an engine <laughs> or like a jet or something. Um, what do you think of your build here? I I do like it. Uh, the, the quarterback situation is good. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I would have done a little bit different against that. That's how the draft fell. Uh, Zamir White in my flex, but potentially could end up being Nick Chubb. And then I have Ross, you know, receivers on the bench they could just break out jameson joshua palmer dots like break out break out break out potential they could all be <laughs> dropped by week four but i think that the starting lineup hell <laughs> although i'll say my starting lineup does look like hey if this was two th- this is the covid year <laughs> look out everybody because this is amazing <laughs> and i would say very you know i i eight is tough eight is tough in the first round because i really want one of those three running backs and they just didn't fall um not getting Barkley in the second round, going Devonte Adams. I think that's a that's a curveball where I have to go. Mm, may, you know, I I really I could take Etn there. I I think I'd like this build a little better if I'd gone running back in the second round. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like Chase Adams, that's that should that should be awfully good. Like Devonte Adams has has scary quarterbacks, but like it has never mattered, and I just feel like it will continue not to matter. Um, you're forgetting the old, the other cool catchphrase. You don't have a stack. <laughs> Your build doesn't My have build a stack. My build is risk. stackless. That is a stackless build. But yeah, I mean, you know, you you get to the middle rounds, you get to six, seven, eight, nine. You should be getting players you think are coming at a discount because that's why you like them relative to where they're getting taken. So uh, both teams, very fun, very interesting. But we would love for you uh, to tell us uh, your grades. You can give us grades down in the... Uh, down the comments we 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 took a shot we're going to do one of these per week with a a different guest Uh, none will be as entertaining as mr jake seeley who i would love for you to follow on twitter at all in kid and check out on the (laughs) athletic and check out i think you're scheduled to come on my show we're going to do adp surprises not next week but the week after which is one of the most anticipated shows of the preseason on my on my podcast and i appreciate your friendship and thanks for doing this Yes. Always appreciate you having me. It's always a blast. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to AG1. Remember, drinkag1.com slash Harris. Uh, I drink it every morning. I do enjoy the effect that it has multiple ways. I'll just say say multiple ways. Uh, And thanks to Dave Piper for producing. And uh, thanks to you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.